From the small town of Ridgewood, New Jersey, my hometown, you can see New York City's skyline 17 miles away. It's a convenient commute to New York's downtown financial district, and every morning hundreds of locals board these trains bound for Wall Street. Go. Tuesday, many of them did not come home. At least 12 of our Ridgewood neighbors and possibly many more are still missing in the World Trade Center rubble. Hundreds narrowly escaped with their lives. The entire town has been shocked and transformed. Flags fly at half mast and they fly everywhere. The overlook once a place of beauty and romance has been turned into a memorial. And everyone in town wants to do something to help. Please help. Please stop to support our country. <laughs> and we thought, 25, we, we thought United United States. States. Children canvass the neighborhoods for donations for the rescue workers. The town's Red Cross office is abuzz. Volunteers load supply trucks and answer thousands of calls. But we really appreciate you calling the Red Cross. People situation. feel in such an intense, overwhelming need to do right. something. They want right to be now. there. They uh, want to help try and find somebody. They want to pull away the, right the concrete and the glass. I mean, these people, they yes, don't, they don't say, they don't ask, right would it be now? risky? This past week, what will be a sad season of memorial services began. <laughs> Friends of John Van Dievender, my friend, came together in a local church to mourn his passing and offer condolences to his wife, Annie, their three children, Johnny, Janie, and Molly. People speak of the untold number of lives touched by this overwhelming catastrophe. Just look at the number of people affected by the death of just one victim. A thousand people, from the pizza maker to the golf pro, packed the church and stood outside for John's service. Relatives remembered him as a young boy. Johnny had that twinkle, that, that little impish grin. He could get away with murder. There were those who spoke of John as a father. But if Janie was playing softball, John was coaching the team. If Molly was on the couch watching a movie, John was right there next to Molly watching a movie. Johnny was playing junior football, John ends up being president of the junior football program. They also remembered him as a friend. When I had a baby, he was the one who took me out for a cigar and a beer. When I was down, he always knew how to pick me up. Johnny Van was truly larger than life. And they remembered him as a neighbor. I know you're listening, John, so I want you to know that I view this as a temporary relocation, for I know one day we will be neighbors again. Friends pledged to stand by John's family. Johnny, Janie, and Molly. While none of us will ever be able to replace your father, we want you to know that between your uncles and each of us, you'll have a lot of eyes on you and a lot of concerned and helping hands available each and every day. We love you guys. There were tears and laughter. <laughs> Reverence and irreverence. He would show up at Ridgewood Country Club in his 1990, whatever that thing was, green minivan with the bumper falling off, no brakes, no air conditioning. It was filled with newspapers and all kinds of debris. And he kid the valets how he knew they were all fighting over who's gonna get to park his car. Look at all the lives just one victim touched. When I or any other kid was around him, I could always act like a kid. I didn't always have to mind my manners and act like an adult like I do around other grown-ups. We could just be ourselves as if he was just one of the guys. All the little things that make a life. Not much good has come out of this disaster, but Mr. Van has changed all of our lives so very much, all in our own way. And on September 11th, 2001, we lost one of the greatest fathers and persons in Ridgewood. But now we have gained an angel. John's niece, Ashley. When I found out in school that the World Trade Center had been bombed, I called my aunt and she said, Ashley, he's gonna be okay. And even though he's not here with us today, I know he's okay, and we're all going to be okay. 
John has come home to Ridgewood. He was found and identified by an inscription on his wedding band, one of fewer than 200 victims identified of the more than 6,000 still missing.